So the idea of this is you're meant to be able to glug, glug, glug it. Yeah. Are you going to prove it? <laughs> He's... Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Is it a glue gluer? It, it definitely looks like it. We're doing another range review. As you can tell, there's one of us missing. Brendan's currently being a hyper nerd yeah. and <laughs> learning, doing master of wine studies while we're here like, carrying the team, I guess. Tell you, what, you don't want to take a week <laughs> off in YouTube because we could replace you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're, we're open call auditions. Like, send us an email. We'll, we'll get you in. No worries. Uh, so, we're basically going to go through a whole bunch of other wines from super hardcore natural producer from the Adler Hills. So, we are doing uh, Shintilla which is a guy called James Madden, who has been making wine in the other hills since I think 2016 maybe, but he's been kicking around. I think you're right. <laughs> I'm just gonna be yeah. your moral support. He's like, today. yeah, you've yeah, done absolutely. well. You've done well. As you can, we don't have a resident expert. I'm just, I'm doing my best. Yeah. So Noah's being Brendan. I'm being Noah, and that means that. Yeah. We haven't got a <laughs> Where's <meeting>? Henry? Where's <laughs> Henry? We haven't got a moron here. We can finally chat. Yeah. Exactly. Kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Now it's all highfalutin conversations here. Uh, so basically, James Madden basically grew up working in hospitality around the country, and he cut his teeth in a whole bunch of different venues from Perth to Melbourne to Sydney and all this kind of places. Uh, and then in the early 2000s when this natural wine boom kicked along he was kind of inspired and excited by it and then started doing vintages in Adelaide uh, in his off time so worked through people like James Erskine and uh, Anton von Klopper with like the real beginnings of the natural wine movement I know this might be going completely over your head hey natural wine movement <laughs> all that kind of thing I'm Noah I know all of these things yeah exactly <laughs> I, I just gotta think of myself as think of yourself as me yeah exactly uh, so we're basically gonna try his new release there's a variation of different vintages there's 2020s there's 2019s there's vintages from mul multiple different vintages there's blends together cool uh, so we've got some interesting stuff here so let's start with this little pet nat He's called Forever Young. Love it. Great song. A banger song. If you, did you really graduate high school if you didn't listen to Forever Young while you held your crush's hands and thought about how this <laughs> is the best time of your life? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to make it through, baby. Whoa. Don't worry. We'll be here together. That's interesting. Oh, I smell so super yeasty and yeah, easy, really bready, brioche. So he does do something super interesting, uh, which is why it's called Forever Young. It's called Solera. So basically, the, a, a portion of this wine is essentially a blend of multiple vintages that he's kept going and going, adding together. So it's the uh, it's the sourdough yeast base that I yes, always say, and then exactly. Brandon's like, not really. No, it's, that's <laughs> not right. You're absolutely wrong. No, it. That's what I like that analogy, and this is basically the thing. So this is a blend of, I believe, some Vidello and Chardonnay alongside his multiple, like, ever-growing Solera brand in a little, uh, lovely little delightful pet nap. And we noticed, we noticed in the bottle before. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there are some bits floating around in this yeah, wine. There's there a bit some of real like knife and fork sort of consumable stuff going on here. There's a bit of tartrate drop out, but it's tasty though. It's delicious. I mean, Isn't it just? that's the thing about this kind of thing. You don't filter it out. You leave more flavor in. No. This is super delicious. We're going to your favorite variety. My favorite Chardonnay. Chardonnay. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guess it. Ah, uh, yeah. So this is his little Adelaide Hill Chardonnay. Uh, it's from, do you guys, do you know too much about clones? Oh, yeah. Like, which season? Like, Clone Wars? Attack, like, of the Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones. I know a little bit. I don't know about the ethics of actually using them to make... What are you talking about? So... <laughs> Obviously not this. Yeah, droids. This is droid wine. Droid wine. Uh, huh? No, so Clones is basically a, a difference, a slight difference in variations of Chardonnay. So you have basically little different species. Essentially, this is made from a very, very obscure clone called uh, Entav 84. So it does sound like a droid. Direct press straight to barrel, and then it's left to, left to ferment for, I think, about 12 months. Um, and then it's bottled with no sulfur. So making wines in this way, particularly with Chardonnay, is pretty hardcore. Um, but mm. I am very interested to try this. Yeah. Uh, if we were tasting this blind, I wouldn't have guessed it was Chardonnay. I'll tell you that for free, because... Obviously, I don't know anything about guessing wine. It's really light. It is really light. It's like very energetic and fragrant, zesty. We're drinking a, like, 
a little bit cold, I would love this like super cold. Mm. But yeah, it's got that kind of lemon pithy, Very lemon curdy, flinty. It is really delicious. It's not as like balls out oaky. Nah, butter, shot, oak. Mate. Nah, it's not that. It's yeah, really light and zesty. Yeah, it's it's energetic and yeah, it's it's a great deal of fun. I reckon it's it's. I reckon this is someone, for someone who hates Chardonnay. Give them this, then tell them not. Don't tell them it's Chardonnay, and yeah. they'll probably get down with they it. They won't understand. If you don't like Chardonnay, but you want to try Chardonnay, try the Chantilla Chardonnay. Yeah, because exactly. Chardonnay for non-Chardonnay drinkers. Yeah, it's almost got like this Riesling level of acidity. So yeah. It, it, it's super dry. So, good little entry level for you. Uh, I. If you don't know how to pronounce his Chintilla, his Chintilla no. try pronouncing the name of this one. I've been watching a lot of the Olympics recently, so I'm sure I'll be able to get down with the phonetic pronunciation of this one. Are you sure? Lay it on me. Yeah, let's go. Uh, I'm not. I'm not even going to try. Oh, the MV Lacrick. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's the way it's actually pronounced because I have no idea. Yeah, put it on wax. That's it. <laughs> Lock it in. Lock yeah. it in, Eddie. So, uh, what sort of wine is it? So this is a blend of Chardonnay and Sauvignon, and this is a multi-vintage or non-vintage. So this is like many years, many two different years at least. Cool. So I think this is uh, a 2019 Sauvignon, and then the Chardonnay. I don't even think James knows which one it is, <laughs> <laughs> like which I absolutely love. Just like I don't know, just put it in. Tastes yeah. good. Is this a little bit? Is this the equivalent of it's Sunday night? You're not really sure what you've got in the fridge, but you've got to make dinner. <laughs> Right, is that what you mean by the Chardonnay? You're like, ah, oh, I can't really remember what that is, but yeah, it smells it, kind it, of it, It's been kicking around in the cellar, I forgot to label it. So Sauvignon is a bit of an obscure variety in Australia, not too much planted around. And this really is that next step down from the Chardonnay, which has got a little bit more texture, and yeah. uh, but it's still got that great acid profile. This is really, uh, it, almost like a sour lolly. Yeah, for sure. It's got those super high levels of acid. Mm. So it's like, it literally tingles the end of your tongue. What would you drink that with? Uh, again, I'm still saying cheese. Cheese? Yeah, I still want that kind of, or... Rich, yeah, like well, a soft like a cheese. Burger. Like just like a hamburger or a cheeseburger or something like that. Mm. Yeah, so basically this is the blend of the 60% Sauvignon, 40% Chardonnay. The Sauvignon spent about two years in barrel, which is pretty wild. The Chardonnay, no idea, um, but yeah, beautiful little interesting wine. Lovely bit of texture, great acidity. Yeah. Super delicious. Uh, have you had a wine under floor? Under floor, as in from a cellar that's beneath? No. No, so <laughs> essentially uh, floor is what they, is a strain of yeast or a style of yeast. Oh, that cork is gone. Absolutely gangbusters. Oh, no. It's just disintegrated as I've tried to pull it out. So let's, we're going into surgery here. This is the operating table. So this is a Sauvignon that he's made in that kind of style. So he's aged this for several months under this layer of floor yeast. And Whoa. you can see it's kind of orange, but as you'll taste it, you'll have this really like interesting nutty grilled cashews kind of flavor. I find that really pleasant. I think that's delicious. It's surprisingly like high in acid. I thought this was going to be like a little bit more like chill and uh, oxidative and like a lot low, a lot lower in acidity. Yeah. But look at that color. That is so delicious. It's a cool color. That is real. I, you say it looks kind of orange. That's very orange. Yeah, this is proper like middle of a traffic light level. But it's got this really cool grippy tannin. It's got this like peach fuzz, like. Like literally licking the skin of a peach flavor to it. But this is super delicious. Um, not as oxidative as I was expecting. Not as nutty and saline and interesting like that. Uh, but I think this is great. I think this will probably do well in the cellar too. Yeah, it does just cling to your tongue a little bit and lets yeah. that flavor really It's like that on. phenolic grip kind of thing. Uh, Yum. Very tasty. Now we are on to Orange. We're finally off the the white wine wagon, but off, off the white wine band, band wagon wagon is what I'm calling it now. Uh, and moving to orange wine. So let's see how the cork goes through the wax. Straight oh. through. YouTube money. <laughs> I love I love the purple wax. How sick is the purple wax? Purple is a lovely color. Now, if anyone ever buys a Unico Zello wine that's too thickly waxed, it's probably because I messed up and double dipped. So I apologize. <laughs> Definitely me it's, on the bottling line. It's wine. tough. Uh, cool. So this is Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio. That's like pink. That is like the coolest like salmon coral pink. 
Wow, look at the bubbles like holding their shape oh, on top wow. of that. What's That's going on there? So That's sick. cool. So this is Pinot Gris that spent, I think, six months on skins. Like, so a long time. Six months time. on skins, goddamn. That's, that's a heap of time. Like, mostly we talk in weeks with skin contact. I'm just gonna leave it out like I've done with every other one. Um, but yeah, so this will definitely be grippy and textural and quite, quite racy. Yo, that's, yeah. Light. Uh, um, <laughs> strawberry boy. Like, I don't know, you get mm. some strawberry from that? A hundred percent. I swear to God, every pink wine that I taste, I'm just like, strawberries and cream, baby. But, I don't know like, about cream, but What's the like, like rhubarb -y. It's pretty rhubarb, yeah, rhubarb Like, it's got this, like, root vegetable character, probably because it's got this, like, kind of, like, gritty, like, fermented in old oak. Like, almost, it feels a little bit dirty in a nice way. Like, it's like sand kind of texture, like, really fine grained sand. Yeah. yeah. Is the way that I'd describe the tannin. But it's got that really cool, yeah, strawberries like rhubarb, like beetroot kind of thing, beetroot juice. I think this is really, really delicious. But yeah, 100% uh, Pinot Grigio from the Adelaide Hills, six months on skins and then all in uh, secondhand hogshead or like that's the particular size of barrels. Don't quote me in the actual literage. Don't get in the, the comments actual tagging me. I don't want to be out of that about the size of the hoghead. Nah, it's 500 liters, quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> but so far so good with all these wines. Mm. I, I'm super down with these like really energetic and super digestible little wines. Lou Glue, is that what it's called? I want Low Glow, but I know they haven't used W's here, but... This is actually Shiraz and Cabernet. Duh. Which you generally don't think of as like the, the Glue Glue or Chug Chug, chug wine. No, I mean... Desperate times and desperate situations, but wouldn't usually pound it down. Oh, oh my look god! At the color! What? Like it's so it's like pure cherry, cherry juice, but it's got this cool like that cabernet like red, red brick kind of character that like, comes through. I love these colors. Super cool. I love those colors. Um, but Ooh. so basically this is what I think this this kind of thing should be done more in the wine industry. This is a complete collab. So this is Chintillus, this is James doing a collaboration with uh, Clo Wine. I'm not too sure about who does Clo Wine. I need to do my research on that. But basically this is two winemakers coming together and let's make a wine together and do something creative and interesting. But let's try this super juicy little Shiraz Cab. It is juicy. Mm. It happens quite often with me that I find I get misled by smell because I hate the smell of this and love the taste of it. I think that kind of smells like, before you tell me what it actually is, and I'm like, oh no, you're right, this is what it is. It smells like wet sneakers. I was thinking, um, like, used car carpet. <laughs> That's where wet sneakers <laughs> live, baby. Uh, I, it's probably a little bit of reduction. Yep, which definitely. Is, which is totally fine. It ends up making bright and jovial. Jovial? Jovial. I went jovial. Jovial. Bright and jovial style, styles of wine, particularly when they're, like, pressed off this early. But this is Freaking tasty. Yeah, well, this is shot. Like, that, <laughs> so you said that Cabernet is Shiraz Cab, that is Shiraz Cab. Man, I have unfortunately done that a lot with Shiraz and Cabernet just in my time because I've <laughs> had places to meet people to see. Cabs are arriving, time to finish your glass. That is the most chuggable Shiraz on the market. It's up there, it's absolutely up there. <laughs> Uh, I agree. Most chuggable Shiraz cab I've ever had. Which and is a metric that you don't often see associated with Shiraz. Or no, <laughs> yeah, I can, I can really slam this down. Speed I can chug this slush. motherfucker. The ones I would be taking home, uh, I actually really love this Chardonnay uh, Sauvignon. I love the texture, I love the acid. I thought it was super interesting. That was super tasty. So that's my white. Well, I guess the designated red is probably this. But if you're going to pick two, I'd take that and maybe... I actually really love this pen out. Cool. That pen that was super delicious. I think that for me, I'm going to take the Chardonnay because I found that really citrusy and bright and interesting and just a different interpretation of Chardonnay. For sure. Uh, down this end, what did I enjoy? I was actually a huge fan of this one down here. Oh, the, this, the Skinzy Pinot Grigio. The Skinzy, Pi Skinzy Pinot Grigio, yeah. Give me a bit of strawberry, give me a bit of fun. And yeah, obviously the consumption of that is yeah, that'll encouraged. Probably, that that so. probably won't be going home. That'll probably be chugged. Yeah, down. I think I that's probably a lunchtime <laughs> wine, isn't it? <laughs> Something like that. Uh, cool, so I think that's it. Us for going through all the Chintilla wines. Uh, if you can grab these, these are all made in like tiny little minuscule quantities. Yeah. Definitely give them a crack. It's an awesome little producer that's starting to really hit their stride and make some fantastic wines uh, from fantastic vineyards with zero. This is some of the most impressive zero sulfur wines you can try in the country, which is a big claim. But super delicious, super interesting, uh, and a great, interesting representation mm. from the Adelaide Hills. 
Dope. Cheers. Bye. Cool. Hi, Bye. Brendan. Hi, Brendan. <laughs> <laughs>